Thank you very much uh, for those kind words of welcome. Thank you for hosting this event here at the London School of Jewish Studies, which it's uh, my pleasure to have my second visit to on this occasion. And thank you also to the members of your staff who have collaborated in uh, setting this event up, but still more so in writing for the encyclopedia or helping us to find people who will do so. Uh, as was said, I'm Brendan Wolfe. I'm the principal editor of the St. Andrew's Encyclopedia of Theology, which is, I think I am now right in saying, the largest open access new research work in the field of religious thought um, available, at least in English today. We have, as of today, published around 2 million words of research into the religious practices and teachings of five major religions. Uh, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, and Hinduism. So what I'd like to speak about very briefly now is the arrangement of the encyclopedia itself, and I'd like to do that by relating it to some of the decisions and some of effectively what we have learned from the inclusion of Judaism in this massive project. The reason I want to think about things that way is that it was not actually uh, clear right from the beginning, or let me put that differently, there has been a certain degree of resistance to the inclusion of Judaism in this project. And um, some of that resistance may come from places you might uh, imagine. Um, some of it may come from places that you wouldn't necessarily think of. When I first indicated that our intention was for a robust Jewish section with a uh, articles written by Jewish scholars from a Jewish point of view to be integral to this project right from the beginning. One of the points on which people pushed back was the possibility simply of adumbrating Jewish thought under that of some kind of general Abrahamic tradition or some sort of Judeo-Christianity or, or something along those lines. And I'm very glad, I mean, it was it was never in question. That was never an option. I rejected that suggestion immediately. But let me talk a little bit about why I'm glad that we've done so. The encyclopedia's articles are meant to treat the whole of religious thought. And so one of the first things that we've learned or that we've been we found really well exemplified in Jewish theology or Jewish religious thought is the centrality of practice. It's the fact that theology does not need merely to mean some kind of speculative endeavor, but can be a communal reflection, an intellectual reflection upon practices, upon rules, upon tradition, which doesn't need to reduce itself merely to systems of doctrine. And that's uh, integral to how we want to appreciate all of the traditions of the world, but it's something that Judaism has brought home particularly strongly to us. Uh, at the same time, um, we have no desire for a project like this, which publishes articles of about 10,000 words of, as uh, was said, a mix of uh, surveying the field and providing novel insights. We have no desire for this to be a sort of embalming project, a, a mausoleum of theology, but rather a reflection of living conversations uh, in which the uh, vitality of the field can also be communicated. And again, it seems to me that there has been a great deal that I have learned through my frequent meetings with our um, Jewish academic editor, who we'll speak hereafter, with our senior editors, some of whom are joining us online. Um, the way in which different perspectives can be held together without pulling apart from a single tradition. And again, I think that has helped to resource everything that we've done in this wider encyclopedia. So we are now publishing articles in all of the sections. Uh, they are treating, in each case, the subject matter that they discuss from an internal point of view. They're written by people for whom the questions are alive. Of necessity, however, there are disagreements, there are incompatible points of view, not only uh, across the different traditions, but within them as well. And one of the major um, subjects of our discussion in the editorial meetings of the Jewish section has been how to accommodate different perspectives 
along those lines. And I think we've found ways to great success, some of which I think you'll hear about after this. So those are two points on which we have benefited greatly. What is the outcome, therefore? We have the hope of being a resource on the scale of the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy or other major open access works with someday thousands of articles, all of which are provided for free to anyone who can use them. They are available not only for consultation online, but for downloading, for turning into teaching materials with open uh, Creative Commons licenses, allowing them to be used in many different ways. And they have achieved, even in the last couple months, uh, about 50,000 different people have been reading these articles and using them. And that number has grown. It seems to double every couple months. And so we expect pretty soon to be looking at numbers in well, in the next few years, probably numbers in the low millions, which is comparable to some other resources of this type. So it it amounts to a presentation of different ways of thought that are um, loyal to their own background and to their own tradition, but because of encyclopedic standards of rigor and clarity, also transparent to other people, scholars, members of other faiths, Uh, anyone who desires a deeper understanding of theology and religious thought. And to see that Judaism is taking its rightful place in this resource is a source of great pleasure to me, and it has been an honor to work with all of those who have made it possible. Thank you.